Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. So what you're looking at over here is an electronic string action height gauge, which is pretty sensitive and it also works in inches and in millimeters. So when you're working in inches, you're working in thousands. So you have to know how to read a caliper or a micrometer because that's basically what this is, is a caliper. Now, this is meant for automotive use somebody decided to say hey you know let's try to make this into a guitar thing and they did probably made a good penny off of it well i ended up doing a thing where i took and i kind of tapered the end of it a little bit over here not giving it a sharp point there still is a flat spot on there i don't want it to kind of scratch or do anything to the frets and i'm thinking about putting this on the wheel that i have on the grinder upstairs that is like a polishing and kind of round this off a little bit so it doesn't have a sharp edge on it like it does now but still being tapered enough to fit into the whatever grooves that are in the fret and i'll explain why in a minute so to measure your string action height say that this is the 12th or 17th fret so you want to put this over the top of your fret zero it out and then you want to sit there and put it on top of the string over the fret and it'll give you a number over here as far as you know the measurement of how high that string is sticking up now remember this is in thousands now or millimeters so you'll have to know what millimeters and thousands are when it comes to using a ruler and stuff like that to transcribe or, or understand what it is because uh, some guitars will come and say like 5 16 instead of like whatever it would be in thousands or millimeters so you'll have to understand those numbers now what I've been using it for is one measuring the action height at the first fret so say this is the first fret so what I'll do is I will zero this out and then I'll place it on top of the fret and then they'll give me my number that I'm looking for as far as how thick that fret is from the bottom of the fretboard to the top of the fret. I will take some of those shim gauges, put them together to read the same number that is on this display and then I'll add either a 17 16, 17, 18 or a 19 thousandths shim to that not all of them, it just kind of varies of how thick that fret is. And then I'll go ahead and stack them together, butt them up against the nut, and use a nut file to cut the groove for the string until it touches that shim. Starts making a little bit of noise, you can kind of feel it, and then lay off of it, and that should be done, it should be set. By the time I measure the action height at the first fret over here, it should be whatever I added to those shims of the thickness of the fret itself. But I've also been using it for something else now and it kind of worked out pretty good. So if I zero this out, now I just installed this fret. So this fret is freshly new installed on this neck. I've got three of them in already. So if I put this on top of the fret and there is the number of the thickness of the fret in that spot. Now it's not going to be the same all the way down. It's going to vary very minor, but it's going to vary. Now what I ended up doing with the fret that was on here before, and again you want to make sure your fretboard is nice and clean while sliding this over your fretboard. You don't want any debris or anything underneath the pins, this little stands, the feet, or whatever you want to call it that hold this up. So here is my number that I'm looking at as far as this fret wire goes being installed on this neck and you kind of want to try to keep it even as you slide down so this is my difference as far as this fret goes it goes from a 50 to a 52 on the other end so that's telling me that this back part over here is either thicker because I know it's not up any, any high or whatever, there's no high spot over here, it's flush against the fret. So the fret's a little bit thicker in that spot. Well, this is the reason why you level your frets. Now, on a fret that has damage to it or is worn out, that little area right here that I ended up kind of making a taper on each side is going to fall into that divot and then give me a number here of how deep that divot is. So if the overall number of the fret 
and that divot, if I subtract those two numbers, that gives me basically what I have to file these frets down when I do the leveling in order to get rid of that. Now, you could end up with a just a tiny nub here, or you could still have a usable fret. Now, how I determine this is basically how that number looks and how low that fret is going to be. And then I'll take a micrometer and I will put the same number on the micrometer and that'll show me actually how thick that is going to be as far as the fret height. I determine from there, well, is it worth it or should I just replace them all? In this case here, I ended up replacing them all because to me it wasn't worth filing these things down, doing a leveling job on it, and then finding out that there may be a problem later on, and it'll just be a useless neck or useless frets on the neck. So this worked out pretty good. That's how I've been using it. Thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy. Have a good one.